Hey guys, Majeffries here, and welcome back to Gold Rush. Uh, now, in the last episode, you remember we started building an inverted coaster. Um, that coaster has changed a little bit since we left off. Uh, the reason I'm over in this area, in front of Gold Miner, is to build suspense because, and hopefully you guys like what I've done with this, but the new ride is up here. So I'm going to zoom right in like this. There you go, you can see some supports there. I'm going to keep moving forwards. I'm going to lift up here. Are you ready? Here she is. Right. You might look at this station building and think, oh, that's a bit ugly. Basically, there was a problem. Uh, anyone who's played Gold Rush, you'll know this problem straight away. The tree height is affected severely by the landscape. So... Uh, at this point you can't build any trees of any type basically apart from these little cacti uh, let me show you what I mean so we'll choose a large cactus you see actually maybe I might get away with these ones but if I choose medium dead you see it's all red no matter where you put it it's red whereas if you go down here it's it's blue and what it is is this slope and if I go back on the uh, criteria for the park did I recolor that wall? yes uh, you see what they lack in height there and low rise coasters so basically we're limited by height having said that you can see here we've got the nice little straight bit out of the station which we had before and then it drops down curves around the queue path up and over round hits the lift hill here and look how high it goes so we have still got some height where's he off to Oh no, I need to put a new mechanic down actually. Uh, so that's mechanic two, and to fit in with the style, he's going to wear he's going to wear all white, I think, and he's going to be called Billy Bob Hammer. So we've got Billy Bob Spanner and Billy Bob Hammer. Again, apologies to anyone who's offended by that, but hey-ho, it's a joke. Right, so yes, this goes up quite high. What we're now going to do is try and make a ride out of it. And I'm going to do something that's very uncommon on B&M inverted coasters. Uh, I am going to build a twist in the drop. However, it's going to go to the right, straighten out, and then curve to the left. And that's the first drop on this yet-to-be-named roller coaster. Um, and again, unlike most B&M inverts, oh, we're out of money already, bloody hell. Uh, it's going to have a camel hill first before it goes into any inversions. And, you know, I've planned this bit out already, how this drop's going to go and things like that. But the rest of the ride is still, you know, I haven't really planned much out. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to speed up time, because that's how I got the money to complete all this part of the ride as well. Uh, we're going to recolor a few more of these things. We're going to put that that color. We're going to try and match it all up. Um, whilst we're waiting, I might as well take you inside the station and show you what I've done in here. Because I haven't just left it plain and unthemed. Oh no, because that would be boring. So, you can see we've got some extractor fans on the side here. And you're probably wondering what this part of the building is as well. Well, if we scoot inside the building, there's the track. We've got some floor covers down. we got a gas tank here. We might as well colour black. That was the wall. Oh wait, no, it wasn't the wall. What have I done? That colour black. There we go. And we'll colour this white and brown. And we've got a generator here. And then here, it's not very themed yet, but this is the ride control booth. Again, we'll make that a slightly different colour so it stands out. Uh, and then this little side building here would be where the operator sits and it'll have all the computers in that controls the ride. Again, it's not filled out yet. I may do it, I may not. Uh, we'll see. You can see the extractor fans on the side there and somewhere the extractor fans for this bit. Um, so yeah, this ride hasn't been named yet. So I might name it in this episode or I might open it to the floor and see what you guys think. Uh, 
in the meantime though um, I actually want to see how ride performs on this first drop so we'll put that in and we'll put can we afford that one? yeah it looks like we can we might put a ride under here actually if it one will fit you see with the brakes it, it really drags it almost to a standstill and it just gives that little bit more of extreme going down here makes it nice and smooth and slow uh, and enjoyable and then you just about make it over that part of the ride and then you hit the lift hill uh, it's quite a slow lift hill admittedly I like to have slow lift hills I think I've mentioned this before um, builds up suspense on the ride it gives you more of a view across the park um, yeah it's just sometimes I use the speed of the lift hill to moderate between uh, block sections as well to keep it all evenly timed um, so that no ride you know, no riders end up waiting on the train for a section to clear. Uh, so yeah, I'm quite pleased with this. Levels out, nice and slowly. Hits the drop, and here we go. So yeah, I actually quite like the look of that. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, if I was to change anything, I might make it one bit taller like that and then I'll have it drop down and round just to give it that little bit of extra speed going over the uh, camel hump is it that one? no it's that one there we go Oh, that one's a bit excited uh, let's watch it again and just see if it looks faster so let's ride this up to the top like so now you see I've modelled the path a little bit as well, I've changed it, the original slope was somewhere under here whereas now it's over there uh, again it sort of keeps the path a bit out of the way of the ride yeah it looks much better get that nice little bit of air time and then it'll drop down and it'll go into a camel not camel, cobra roll uh, if it'll fit if it doesn't fit I might have to go back a square again uh, we're just going to speed up time again, get some more money in. You see we've got more and more guests arriving in the park now. Twisting Barrels seems to be more and more popular, which is good. Uh, got this Wild West scene here. If I put the Wild West show in, I think it'll be over in this corner. So we've got the scenery there already. And it gives you views out across the uh, the little canyon we've got going here as well. Um, yeah, I'm quite happy with how this park's going, to be honest. I was going to remodel Manic not Manic Miner, it's not called that anymore, Gold Miner uh, but actually looking at it, if I was to change anything it would be just to make this end section a little bit longer but apart from that there's not really much I want to change about it um, let's stop, no, let's keep time sped up I don't know why I did that oh yeah, we should be able to fit this in perfectly, no problem there yeah, this should be good um, so I'm kind of thinking around the 5 or 6 inversion marker for this ride. Uh, probably in one continuous block section as well. Just for space reasons. Um, it also keeps the thrill level up. It doesn't have to go through brakes and be slowed down until the very end. Uh, you can see it's quite a long brake section. What it actually is, is the brakes finished there. There's a block brake there. And then there's an empty slot. And then it goes into another set of block brakes. And then it goes into the station. Uh, if need be, I can get rid of this block section here and make this just a brake run. The reason I kept this bit in was just in case I decided to ex either extend the station or run more trains. It just gives me that little bit more flexibility. Right, so we've had the drop, we've had the camel hump, and now we're going up into our first inversion, which is going to be a cobra roll. Inversions 1 and 2. Um, yeah. I think I will keep that idea. Uh, you know, I don't know many rides that have a Cobra Roll as the first couple of inversions. Um, not sure if there are any, actually, for that matter. Uh, trying to think. Maybe Hydra the Revenge after the Lift Hill. I'm trying to remember, because it has the Jojo Roll. And I'm trying to remember if it's an inver It might be a vertical loop, actually, after the, the hill. Um, I'm really struggling to think of one. I'm sure there's hundreds out there. I just can't think of any right now. Um, 
I suppose you can count boomerang coasters as doing it because they go through the station and then their first inversion is a, a cobra roll. So yeah, any boomerang coaster in the world, either inverted, upright, or um, vertical, they've all got bo uh, cobra rolls as their first inversion. I yeah, I'm thinking of names for this ride now as well. I was going to try and, and name it according to what it does, but that might be easier said than done. Um, trying to think of which way I should make this go. I'm going to try this way first and see if I can sort of tuck it away in the corner. So I actually I have an idea what I can do with this. Uh, we'll see if it works or not. How much is that? That's a £600. Crikey! For half a corkscrew. Whereas it costs 279 for the half loop. That's ridiculous. That's an obscene amount of money. Where the heck am I going to get that kind of money from? This is going to be an expensive ride. It better be good. It better be popular. Uh, I'm having a look at the time, actually. And I'm thinking, maybe, we'll have one last look at this going into that half loop. And then I think we'll call this an episode. Um, because we're over the 10 minute marker. And I'd like to keep my videos under 10 minutes if possible. So, yes. We're going to close this quickly because we don't want any crashes. And we're going to launch straight into the end of video spiel. So, thank you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, click the little subscribe button below. If you have subscribed to my channel, thank you for your continued support. And until next time, guys, I will see you soon.